Good afternoon. I'd like to show you my new acquisition. Acquisition. <laughs> and it's a Yesu um, FTDX10. Now, I have been running many second hand radios since I became an amateur, including the old FT480R, which still goes away fine. Uh, I also have an ICOM IC7400 that is now indoors. Uh, and the warmer shack, <laughs> um, but this one is out here um, at this present time. It's not always out here; it gets put away at night <laughs> to bed. But um, it's uh, in here at the moment. So we've only had it for a few days, and what we're trying to do is set everything up. So I have uh, had a, a little shift around in the shed. I've moved some of the vintage stuff away. Um, concentrating more on amateur radio at the moment. So I've also got a monitor up here, um, an HP monitor displaying the, uh, the same as on the screen. Uh, it's much clearer and if you move away you can see it better. I've got this piece of shelving here to cut back to do that and I have another monitor sitting on top. Now the idea with that one will be to, once we've got it connected up for cat control etc, uh, we can see what's going on with there. Uh, whether or not we'll use digital modes is up to debate at this time, uh, so not too sure on that. And on the floor we have a Yesu, sorry, a, a, a Trio F a T, TS 830S. Uh, what's fine, I had a couple of faults which is now repaired, um, so it's working good. Uh, that will be brought up, probably put on the on the on the, the, the shelf here. So we've got another monitor here, in fact it's a telly, which I used for a long time as a monitor. Don't know what I'm doing with that. Uh, and up here I've got a, a cello piece of junk that I'm just mucking about with at the moment. And I've got a total mess on the bench, but this is, we're getting there, we're getting things done. In this box is an ICOM IC718, that's uh, getting uh, no doubt passed on to someone else, and uh, for a very reasonable price. And we've even got an, uh, a gas fire here. And unfortunately, it was made in the U. A. Well, Russia. Oh dear, it's a bad word. <laughs> but it gets very hot, so I've had to turn it off. Temperature in, in here at the moment is eighteen point one degrees, so not too bad. Okie dokie. So um, this is a radio, and at the moment, all the filters are off. A lot of noise. So the first thing we'll put on is the DNR. That reduces the noise somewhat, and we'll then put on the contour. Noise is, and he's much easier to hear. Now we've got a decent station, so we'll try and notch that out. Now we can do shift. And we can do the width. The adjacent station seems to have now disappeared. So if we turn everything back off. It's the increase in noise that you notice mostly uh, how bad it can be. Very, very bad indeed. But uh, we're running over nine at times here of uh, noise. Better if you put it up here, we'll see it better. So we're running quite a lot of noise um, during the day. Sorry, at <laughs> this time. Uh, it, it tends to get worse at night when people turn on their Christmas lights. Unfortunately, uh, but uh, it does an extremely good job of uh, 
clear and even that noise at night, all these uh, funny sounds and bleeps and noises and so on. Um, power supply, we're using uh, a, an HP server power supply. Uh, let's see, here we are. There it is. That's one of these here. Um, initially, we had a problem when I first put it on <clears throat> and I first got it. Uh, <coughs> it immediately tripped out the power supply. And I actually thought what the issue was was there was a short or something like in the radio. I thought there was it was over current that was coming in, but in actual fact it was over volts. Now this power supply was set to 13.8 volts, and looking at the uh, DC, um, when you turn the radio on, there's a spike, a bit of a spike. It's about 150 millivolts, but it's in positive going, so it's added to the incoming 13.8. It was enough to trip the overvolts protection in these wonderful little power supplies. They are very good, excellent over voltage and over current protection. So um, ideal for amateur use. And I believe they are very, very popular. So it's now set back to, we, we ran it back to 13.5. Point of a volt is not going to make much of a difference to your power output. Well, maybe only two or three watts. But uh, as, a, as an ardent QRPer, um, I have to say no. Now I have a, I haven't used it hugely in earnest since I've got it, this radio, but I've had about three or four QSOs, Hungary, uh, Lithuania, and now where was the other one? Oh dear, I've forgotten. <laughs> uh, dear, maybe come back to me in a minute. Uh, oh, Brazil, Brazil, yeah. Uh, I'm running under under 50 watts. Um, it was two into Europe, but one was at 25 watts and one was at 30, and I received a good five over sevens. So quite good, I'm quite happy with that. So, yeah, no problem at all. So, a very nice radio, and to be fair, um, I got this one for a good price. It was two months old, and uh, I'm very pleased with it. It's funny because there seems to be quite a few of these going uh, quite quite soon after purchase and it makes me wonder why I don't understand but uh, I think it could be that some people just find it a bit complex um, as you can see when you go to the function button uh, there's a lot of things to set here you've got the level that level is the level of the uh, uh, waterfall um, you can put a markers on it you can change the, the colors you know, whether you've got the contrast and the dimmer for the this this display here which I've turned down to quite a low level it's a lot brighter than that normally and um, then you've got your mic gain mic equalization uh, process level uh, all sorts of things here now I'm not using any equalization of the microphone nor am I using the processor uh, and I find it's fine I've got my RF power to set to 25 watts which if I can go to I can change that and as you can see there you go, it shows up on the screen of what you can set it to, you know, so I can go up to 100 watts if I wish, but no, I, I don't run that kind of power. Um, I have never found a need to do it, um, to be fair. Uh, so that's a, that's what you've got. Um, it also has a, a CWD coder and... I mean, I'm not into that right enough, but I do hope to be doing in the CW shortly and also passing my uh, full license uh, in the next month or two, depending how things go. Uh, so there we go. I just thought I'd uh, show you this. Uh, I highly recommend it. Nice, nice radio. Uh, works beautifully. Um, I've had very good reports, good audio reports, etc. Uh, so no great complaints whatsoever with it. So, yeah. Um, my icon, as it says in the house, it's a, it's it's uh, does HF in two meters, which is ideal. Um, so there we go. But I've all this cabling to sort out. I've got a lot of tidying up to do here. I've got my bench to sort out. I've got uh, wiring under here, as you can see, is a mess. I've got my tellies all to kind of get in, in, in the order that I want them to be, uh, and just tidy up the rubbish that's all lying about uh, and make this more uh, uh, presentable as a shack rather than a workshop come museum. So there you go. So okay guys, thanks for watching. Uh, first video for a wee while. And uh, I hope uh, everybody's uh, well. And uh, we wish you everyone a, a happy Christmas. And a very, very prosperous new year. And uh, may Santa be good to you. And bring you either nice vintage, uh, vintage stuff or a, a nice uh, radio 
uh, etc. So well, hopefully everybody's uh, happy and uh, keep in touch. Uh, comments please on the on the comments list and if you're not a subscriber please subscribe and press the notification bell for the videos. Um, been busy, haven't been able to get as many videos on as I'd like to but uh, such is life, I've only got two, two hands, not 42. Okay, no, thanks guys, bye for now.